Hello, in this presentation, we will compare QuickBooks Online versus QuickBooks Desktop. Hello, in this presentation, we're going to record the deposit related to a short-term investment which has become due within QuickBooks Online. We will have a comprehensive QuickBooks Online course soon, if not available yet. We also have a comprehensive Excel course which complements the QuickBooks courses and a QuickBooks Pro desktop version course you can find at the link below. Here we are in the QuickBooks Online dashboard. We're going to continue with the Get Great Guitars problem. We're going to say that we have a deposit that is going to be made into our bank account for an investment that we have made that has become due. In order to get a better grasp of what is going on there, let's take a look at our financial statements, the balance sheet in this case, and see what we're talking about. We're going to go to the reports down here on the left side. We will then say the report will be the balance sheet. So we're going to say we have a balance sheet. And we're going to run that report as of 02 2821. We're going to be working in this month in our problem here. So actually, let's make that 0201 starting at the beginning of the month. And then 02 2821 for the month of February in the year we are working on running that report, rolling down to what we want to see here. We see we have a short term investment. So we have this short term investment. We're going to imagine that's in something like a CD or something in the bank, in the same, possibly the same uh, bank account that we are doing business with. And if it was something like a CD or a, a short term investment account, it may just become due at some point. And we might tell our bank, hey, when it becomes due, we want to take that money out and the interest earned from it and put that money into our checking account. If the bank does that, we may not see it go into our checking account until a later time when we check the bank account because it's going to happen automatically or uh, when we do the bank reconciliations on the bank statement. So we're going to say, hey, that happened now. We've got this deposit into our checking account that we need to reflect on our side of the books, meaning our checking account has gone up by that 12000 plus the interest that we need to reflect here in QuickBooks. And that other side of it is because of this 12000 investment that has become due. Therefore, this needs to go down to zero. And some added interest on top of that, which we're going to say is $250. So the total we are getting is 12250 12000 of it is going to be reduced from here and go into the checking account. And the other 250 is going to go into the checking account. The other side will be interest income. So to record that, we can just go straight to the deposit. There's a couple different ways we can do this, but we're going to record it with a deposit. So we're going to go up top to this little plus icon, and we're going to select in the other area. We're going to record the bank deposit. So bank deposit. And then within the bank deposit, remember we have these undeposited items. That's the ones that we can kind of click on. And uh, those represent the items that we have received from customers generally. Uh, that have not yet been deposited. That's what, not what we're working with here. We're working with another deposit, meaning uh, a different type of activity happened. Our investments became due and is going a deposit into our checking account and out of this other investment account. So we're going to scroll down to the uh, new accounts, add new deposits down here. And we're going to say that we received it from, and again, we could choose uh, whoever the, the recipient of the deposit was from. It's going to be our bank. We're going to say again, uh, that's who we have the investment with. And the account then is going to be short term investment. This is the account that we need to make go down to zero. We probably should put a, a memo a description. I'm not, but <laughs> that the, the uh, amount became due, a short term investment became due, deposit into the checking account. And then the, the uh, payment method, we're just going to say uh, we're going to keep it at cash. I'm not sure if that's a required field. But it's probably a transfer. We're probably thinking a transfer in this case. It actually was transferred automatically from our one account with the bank to another account. And then the amount we're going to say for this amount is only the 12000 Even though we got 12200 because we're trying to reduce the um, investment account by that amount. So our total deposit is 12000 but we've really got 12200 The other side is going to also be Chase. But it's not going to be short-term investment in terms of the account. 
it's going to be interest income. So there should be subtype of interest income. And if we don't have it, we're going to add it. So we're going to add interest income in this case. So it's going to be an income type of account. Actually, we're going to change it not from an income. It's not going to be a main income. It's not our principal portion of income. We want to put it into other income. And that'll put it in a different place on the income statement to tell our readers, hey, it's not really our primary thing. We don't make interest income as a normal business. We're going to put it into other income and that'll be in a separate subsection of the income statement or profit and loss. And then on the detail type, it's going to be interest earned. That's the one we want, interest earned. And so the name, we're going to say it's interest income. And description, none. It's not going to have a subcategory. So we're going to save and close that. Description, probably a good idea. We're not going to put one there. Method, I don't think we need one there because it is a transfer and uh, that's not an option here. So I'm just going to try to leave that blank this time. And then we're going to say that the amount is going to be for the 250. Now remember to tab over so that it does calculate down here. So this is the total deposit we are having. It's going to go into these two accounts, the Chase, uh, the short term investment and the interest. So if we think about the journal entry before we go visit the journal entry in terms of finding the financial statement accounts, we could say that, well, the checking account is going to go up by 12250 The other side is that the investment account is going to go down. That's where it came from. The other asset account is going to go down so that this asset account, the checking account, will go up. And the rest of it, the 250 is going to increase the income account, the profit and loss for what we have earned through investing that original 12000 and then gaining income, interest income, of 250 Before we do save this, however, make sure to go back up top. And this date amount, is uh, we need to make that as of the dates that we are working in. In our case, it's going to be 020621. So February 6, 2021, uh, to change that. So if, uh, make sure to put that date in there. If we don't, it's just going to be out of order. The transactions we're going to have is out of order. Of course, QuickBooks Online will try to pick the date that's the current date that we're working in when we work a future problem or when we go back in time and work things as often happens in practice. Uh, when we're entering things that are a little bit late for transactions that happened prior, then we got to make sure to go in and change those dates. So we're going to scroll back down. Here is the save and new. Then we'll check out these reports and see if it does what we think it should do. So I'm going to close this back out. We're going to go to the reports left side. We're going to look at the balance sheet first. So we'll type in the balance sheet. Balance sheet. Here is the balance sheet. We're going to put the uh, range of the dates to the February 020121, the month we are working in, 022821, and run that report. So then we have, if we scroll down here, we see in the checking account, we should have a deposit of 12250 If we go in here, uh, there's our deposit, 12250 It's not the last transaction because remember we kind of went out of order in order to record those loan payments. So we're going to go, we're going to skip around a little bit because it is a book problem here. But if we click on that amount, we will see the payment. And of course our goal here to skip around is to group like transactions so that uh, it can, you know, we'll go out of order when it is giving more of a benefit uh, to go out of order than uh, it does to go in order. So we're going to close that back out, at least in our judgment. <laughs> and then we're going to go back to the reports up top. Back to the report summary. And then if we scroll back down, then the other side was the short-term investment. And notice QuickBooks Online still has a zero there, even though it's gone now. So if there was activity during the time period, QuickBooks still puts that zero there, which is nice because that allows us to go into that and see the activity. So if we go there, then we can go in and we see there's the 12000 that was there before. It's now at zero. Note it's only 12000 not the amount of the check if we, or, or the deposit. If we go into it, we see the total deposit was 12250 the other 250 going to interest income. So let's find that interest income account. We're going to close this bag out. And we're going to go to the reports left side, and we're going to look at the profit and loss this time. So we're going to say profit and loss, profit and loss. And the amounts or the date range is going to be 02. 0121 to 022821, February 21, 2021 to February 28, 2021. Run that report. Then we're going to scroll down. We have this interest income, 250. Note it's not in the main income. That's why we didn't put it in the main income. We stopped from doing that. We put it down here in the other income, and that's going to say, uh, QuickBooks is going to say, 
our reports are to our readers are going to say this is going to be our major income up here these are our normal expenses here's other income it's not part of our normal operations we're not an investment company but uh, we do have some other income down here so judge us really on our operations by our operation income and then down here we got some other items the interest expense by the way might be better uh and in, in another category down here as well but i'm going to match what our problem has set up in our case and keep it where it's at but just note that interest expense might be better down here below as not a normal top of transaction as well so we're going to say that uh, let's click on this 250 and there is the 250 if we select that item then we have our deposit once again of the 12,250 broken out between short-term investment and interest income. Hello, in this presentation, we will record short-term investment deposit in QuickBooks Pro 2018. In other words, we have an investment that has become due and therefore we're transferring it out of the investment asset account and into the check-in account. If you have been working along with us, we will be continuing along with the Get Great Guitars. If not, that is okay. We will be recording this transaction, transferring an asset that has become due in terms of a short-term investment from the assets to the checking account. We currently have the home, home page open, which you can find at Company and Home Page. If you have the backup file, you can restore that backup file to this point at the file and... Uh, restore the backup file it's good to have the same point in time the backup file will provide that or if you've been working through the problem to be at a similar point in time so that we can start here and move forward however if you don't have access to that or if you're looking at a different file that's okay we can go through this setup and get the most out of this setup note that we do have the open windows not open over here we're going to select open windows by selecting the view page and open window list now we have the open window list only being the home page at this time our goal here the objective is to convert a short-term investment that has become due and now we are receiving uh, the deposit from that so we're going to scroll over and take a look at where that short-term investment is and then record the uh, expiration of that short-term investment decreasing the assets and putting it on the books in cash as the cash has been received for it in the checking account to do that we will take a look at the balance sheet so we're going to go to reports up top we're going to scroll down we're going to go to company and financial then we're going to scroll down to the balance sheet we're going to change the date range up top so when we drill down on the data it will have a range so we're going to customize and the date range is going to be 0101 one we are working in in uh, 2021 starting with january 1st 2021 to 12 31 21 there's our date range we're going to say okay looking at our balance sheet we see the short-term investment right here at the 12,000. what we're going to say is that short-term investment has become due and we've received that 12,000 plus interest of another 250. 12,000 plus the 250 then is what we are going to need to record in terms of a bank deposit and we're going to have to in, into our checking account and we're going to have to reduce this amount to zero it having been expired at this point and we're going to have to do something with the difference that will be uh, interest revenue some form of interest income interest revenue a couple of ways we could do this we could go to the short-term investment register and record that transaction there we could go to the journal entries we could record this as a journal entry by going to the company up top and make a journal entry if we were to do it that way we would debit uh, the check-in account we would uh, for the amount that was deposited 12,250 credit the short-term investment and then credit the 250 uh, to the interest revenue however it might be the easiest thing to do would be to go into the uh, check register and record this as a deposit directly into the check register and use the check register to split those accounts and thereby not really needing to know debits and credits as we record this so let's take a look at that option we're going to go to the banking drop down we're going to the use register 
and we're going to keep the check register as the register we will be using and say OK. The date of this transaction is going to be 020621. So to uh, February 6, 2021, the, the check is not going to be correct. We do not want to check there. What we want is a deposit. I'm going to show that by just typing in DEP just to eliminate the check number. So when we write another check within uh, this field, the correct check number will pop up. And we don't have a check now, but this is just going to be an implication that this is going to be a deposit entered directly into the check register. Next, we're going to say uh, Chase is the investment that we had in. That's going to be our bank. We also had, we're going to say that this investment was with Chase, like a CD or short term investment. We're going to say tab, tab. And we want to make sure that we are in the deposit screen, not the check screen. We're increasing. This is the deposit side, not the payment side. And we're going to enter the 12250 there and tab. Now we need an account. Now we only have the one account here again. We need two accounts in order to record this. One, we need to record the decrease of the 12,000 investment originally, and we need to record the 250 of interest revenue. So in order to do that, we're going to select the split item here. That'll give us our, our accounts that we can select. One's going to be the short term investment that needs to go down to zero, but only for the 12,000. The difference then needs to be going to some type of interest revenue. So we don't have interest income, it looks like, from the accounts that were set up originally when we set up these accounts through QuickBooks. QuickBooks generated this chart of accounts using uh, the manufacturer, or not the manufacturer, the merchandising setup. We could put it into uncategorized. But it might be more specific for us to put it into an account called interest expense. So we're going to say interest uh, interest revenue or interest income, I should say. Income. I'm going to type in interest income. It's going to be a new account. So when we select tab, it's going to say we don't have this set up. Tab. Uh, interest income is not in the account list. We're going to go ahead and set that up then. Setting up the new account. Now it's going to default to expense when we enter something into the check register and that's not what we want. We want it to be income. So we're going to say drop down and we're going to look for income account and we want it in other current income to be more specific. It's not normal. Our normal income operations. We don't typically get most of our income from interest uh, and therefore we're going to put it into the other income selection. Everything else will remain the same. And we're going to say save and close. There we have the item. So the 12250 that's going to be the increase to the checking account. The two other accounts affected, decreasing the short-term investment, decreasing the interest income. Let's go ahead and record that and then take a look at the impact on the financial statements. Going back over here to the balance sheet. We're going to select the balance sheet and see if it does what we would think it to do. We should have a uh, increase in the checking account for the amount. So we're going to double click on the checking account and we have an increase in the checking account for here it is. It's not quite at the bottom because we entered that last one a little bit out of order in the date range. So we have the two six here. It's the 12,250 uh, that we increased in the checking account. If we double click on that, it goes to a deposit screen. Note that uh, we entered it directly into the check register, but when QuickBooks looks at a deposit, this is the driving form. So it's going to go to the deposit screen there. We can close that out uh, just to verify that it is the same transaction. We can look at the uh, checking check register in the open windows items, and we can see that we do have that amount uh, here as well. If we were to double click on this little DEP, we would get to that same driving form, that deposit form. So there is that. Back to the balance sheet. So there's the balance sheet side. Let's take a look at the profit and loss side by going to reports up top, drop down. We're going to go to company and financial. We're going to take a look at the profit and loss. Changing the date range to the dates we are working in 010117 to, uh, not 17, 0101. 21, January 1st, 2021 to 12 31 21, December 31st, 2021. 
looking for the other side of this transaction in terms of the interest. So we should have an other income. Notice not in the income section because it's going to be other income. It's not part of our normal operations. And the point of that is to say if we were to present this or read this financial statements, we're saying this is the net income of our normal operations and or loss in this case. And this is the stuff that doesn't normally happen. We don't typically, our business is not the business of investing. Our business is the business of buying and selling guitars. But we had this other income related to it. When we look at our normal operations, you want to take a look at this number. When you want to look at all the normal operations plus the other things that have happened that are outside the norm, then that's going to include the interest income. If we double click on that, we see the interest income here. And if we double click on that, we of course see that deposit slip once again. Closing this out, closing this out. Last piece of it, if we go back to the balance sheet, you would think would be on the balance sheet showing a zero for that investment account. However, it's not here. Why isn't it here? Because it is zero and therefore not showing on the balance sheet. If we want to take a look at it, make sure that that uh, account was impacted, that it is indeed zero and it was affected by that journal entry. We can go to the lists and go to chart of accounts. And then if we go find that account, it's going to be an other current asset or some type of asset that we, it was a short term asset. Yeah, other current type asset. It is at zero. If we double click on it, we'll see the check register. Here's the register. And we see that 12,000 bringing it down. If we look at that deposit, double clicking on the deposit, we'll then get back to that deposit sheet. So that's the, that's the recording of an uh, uh, investment that has become due. We've received the deposit. Oftentimes, we see this on our bank statement where we have this deposit, in this case, for $12,250. And uh, we then need to decide, well, how are we going to record that? Because one of our investments then must have become due. And we're going to have to record that increase in our checking account and the decrease in uh, the investment account as well as the related interest or type of, in, of uh, earnings that happen, probably interest or dividends.